Welcome back to This Week in Film. It's the weekly podcast where we get together and talk about the movies we saw over the past seven days. I'm Nick Pinanto, joined as always by Midwest Matt Lauer. Matt, how's it going? It's going great. How are you, Nick? Great to hear. I'm good. Uh, I've seen a couple of movies this week, and uh, I'm going to talk about them. Awesome. It's the whole point of the show. Yeah, what is Huh? I noticed that there was a theme with the show. Yeah. <laughs> movies. Uh, what did you see? Um, I saw the movie Searching. I have not heard of it. I'll bet you have. Because um, <laughs> I, I saw some previews for it like a while back and thought that it might have already come out. Um, it, it's It's got uh, Harold, I think, from Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle as a dad searching for his daughter who went missing oh you never saw any previews for that no oh okay well never mind then you're right you didn't know about it <laughs> <laughs> how about you what'd you see well i watched uh two movies this week i saw a movie called attack the block which oh is... that's a great one. Oh, you've seen it yeah oh great um and I also watched the movie from 1995, Sylvester Stallone and Antonio Banderas in Assassins. Oh, God, no. Yeah. I've seen that, too. Oh, <laughs> great. I took so many notes. <laughs> I'll bet you did. <laughs> that was great. You had about three hours to take notes in on that one. Yeah, that is a long, it was long. So yeah, long. So long. Um, <laughs> uh, so why don't I, I'll start with Attack the Block. Cool. Um, so, Attack the Block from 2011 is a uh, British movie. It's a uh, it's like an action sci-fi, I guess, sort of a comedy kind of a movie. A little bit, yeah. Um, I thought it was okay. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, I kind of thought it was going to be a lot better. It really felt like watching a foreign film, though. Uh, yeah. Because the the there's a lot of British slang. In it, mm-hmm. and uh, the the main characters of the movie are these thirteen, fourteen, fifteen year old kids, and they're um they are they're all part of a like a a small gang, and uh, I could not understand what the hell they were saying the whole, the whole movie. <laughs> we had the closed captions on for it, and and it was still like like I don't know what these words are supposed to mean, and you just you just kind of figure out the movie by context. And um, if we didn't have closed captions on, I, I honestly don't think I would know what they were talking about <laughs> at all. But uh, the movie stars uh, John Boyega, who is uh, from Star Wars, the new Star Wars movies. He plays Finn in the new Star Wars movies. And uh, Jodie Whittaker, who my wife recognized from the show Broadchurch, which I have not watched, but she likes a lot. Um. I, I thought this movie was pretty good. I th- I thought for like a lower budget sci fi movie, the the alien monsters were awesome looking. Like yeah, they're like pitch black with the glow in the dark mouths and stuff. I thought it was it was great. Yeah. Um. And and that um is, I I think it's a great effect. I agree with everything you said. Um. By the way, like the in terms of really feeling the the foreignness of it. Um. Even though it's in English and the low budget feel um but that effect is is pretty that's that's people really using their budget to the nth degree because those monsters all they are are monkey suits and they turned the contrast up so much that they become completely black and i don't remember what it was for the the lights in their mouths it might just be like glow in the dark teeth or something Uh uh-huh um, but that's it. It's just a monkey costume from a store with the contrast turned up so much yeah. that uh, that it goes completely black. Yeah. And it's 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 so effective. Uh, like like watch them. Like I I, I kind of wasn't like loving the movie the whole time when if if I'm remembering right, it's a couple years back. But um, but I know once they showed up, I was like, oh man, these are cool. Yeah, they were really cool. And the, the the way the actor inside the suit runs around, like, you know, uh, like on all fours, they run like mm-hmm. like a monkey would run, like a gorilla. 
um but it's really effective it's it's really creepy um and then uh when the when the monsters attack the kid well spoiler alert since we both seen it we're, we're going to get into spoilers so if you wanted to not get spoiled by attack the block now's your chance to get out we both uh, recommend it yeah check out attack the block um but uh the violence in the movie is is crazy cool too cuz when the monsters start eating the 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 kids um the 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 gore is great like there's the one the one time the monster <laughs> bites the one guy's face off and it like rips off his his nose and chin and lips and stuff and i was like oh man that's awesome <laughs> I actually, you know, I don't remember it being that that gory. I'd have to check that movie out. Yeah, there's like a few really gory <laughs> moments. Um, like there's the part where the one monster rips the the one gangster's throat out, and it's it's violent as all get out. And uh, and then I think there's another one when the one kid's leg gets bit by the monster, which looks mm-hmm. which looks a lot worse than then the aftermath shows like it looks like the the monster rips his bone out of his leg but then in the next scene when they're trying to patch him up he's just got some teeth marks on his leg but uh the the basic plot of the movie is uh john boyega and his gang um rob the girl from the movie blood um broad church uh i'm sorry rob the girl from the tv show broad church and while they're in the middle of of robbing her, uh, a meteorite or something smashes into a car next to them. And inside the car is this monster that attacks John Boyega and gives him a cool slash on his face. And uh, and then they go about they go ahead and kill the the alien. Um, and then they they drag it around with them because they're like this thing is crazy cool we could probably sell it and get some money for it and um the, the next thing that happens is a lot of these meteorites come crashing down to earth and and what's revealed is that uh all of the the things crashing into the planet are are more monsters coming in and they're all after John Boyega so you've got like hundreds of these things running around the city or running around this like two block area of of this British or English uh uh apartment complex. And it's really well done. Like they keep trying to get away from this apartment complex, but they keep getting pulled right back in. Uh now why again are they after John Boyega? Uh, well, again, spoiler alert, um, John, the, the one that John Boyega kills at the beginning is a female and because they, because he was, it was all over him, the females pheromones cover, cover John Boyega. And then it's what the males are hunting down. They're like attracted to the female scent. So that's why they're, they're, it seems like they're following them everywhere is because they drag the female wherever they went. And so the the monsters are are trying to track down the uh, the scent of the gotcha. the female one. Uh, I forgot that too. Uh, guest appearance in this movie by Nick Frost, who's one of my favorite favorite people in movies. Uh, if you don't know who he is, he's uh, if you've seen Hot Fuzz, he's the uh, the fat cop in Hot Fuzz, and he's in all those Edgar Wright Simon Pegg movies. Uh, but it was nice to see him. It was a nice little treat. He uh he made an appearance in the new Tomb Raider movie as well. Oh really? Yes. How was that movie? Did you see that? I guess you did. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess reviewed you did. it on the show. You did? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's that <laughs> memorable. That must have uh, been that episode I wasn't there for. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was decent. It's it's worth watching. Uh, it's certainly better than the Angelina Jolie one. Um, it's not a great movie, but I'd say check it out. Okay. Um, but that's really all I have to say about Attack the Block. I don't. I don't really have a whole lot for it. Uh, is the tone a little like all over the place with that movie? I feel like I walked away from it going. This maybe it's just part of that it's foreign, but it felt a, a little, a little unusual. Yeah, the tone is kind of all over the place. Like it kind of goes from from like it wants to be funnier than it is. Um, uh, I feel like and. And it and it struggles in that aspect because it's not really laugh out loud funny like but there are are moments where you're like huh okay um 
and I think it thinks it's funnier than it is. But at the same time, again, I don't know what they're saying half the time. So <laughs> it could be hilarious. So it could be like a lot of uh, a lot of stuff lost in in the translation of the language we both speak. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that English to English gets real tough sometimes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Attack the Block, totally worth checking out. It's a movie that I had been wanting to watch for a really long time and finally got around to it. Cool. Uh, the IMDb page says it's a a teen gang in South London defend their block from an alien invasion. So I guess in South London, that's how people talk. Oh, uh, I'm not going there then. Yeah. <laughs> we're just to all of our South London listeners, we're just kidding. All none of you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, uh, so what do you want to move on to next? Uh, uh, assassins or uh, uh, let's searching? talk about let's talk about your movie, Searching. All right. So, Searching. Um, well, you know, I didn't I didn't prepare for this in terms of actually getting the guy's name. Uh, I meant to look that up, but uh, it's in the theaters right now. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm going to go on a little tangent as I as I often do with my theater going experiences, because there are so many things that happen at the theater aside from just the movie. Here's the first one: Diet Coke. <laughs> now, Nick, I don't know, man. Uh, you, you saw something in the theater pretty recently, so maybe you saw this commercial. But there's a there's a lovely young lady. She's very attractive, walking around drinking the Diet Coke and talking about how she's drinking the Diet Coke. But like the whole conversation she's having with the camera is like, yeah, why wouldn't I drink a Diet Coke? I can do whatever I want. If you, I like Diet Coke because it, cause it makes me happy. What the hell? Don't let people tell you what to do. And then like the the um like slogan at the end of the commercial is like. Diet Coke because I can. <laughs> like, I'm like, who who's out there telling people not to drink Diet Coke? Like, is there some sort of is there some sort of like uh research or argument or something that Diet Coke is like this really really bad for you? I mean it, as it comes to like fake sweeteners, I mean that 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 stuff's been in the discussion for decades now, so I'm like, did I miss something? Did something recently come out in which people were saying, "No, you shouldn't drink Diet Coke," and this is the like, the the rebellion, or, <laughs> or or is it, or is it just that people do like rebelling so much that if they make it sound like you're rebelling by drinking Diet Coke, then you'll want to. I don't know. I, don't, I, I take it you haven't seen this preview. I have not seen it, but. Diet Coke is disgusting, so I can see <laughs> I can see why people would. Although that's going to hurt our chances of getting that, sweet, that diet sweet, Coke. sweet Diet Coke money <laughs> right out the window. Oh, didn't think about um, that. <laughs> so that was there, and I just thought that was weird. Um, and then is is it is the commercial of the girls just like is she walking or is she just like sitting and talking to the she's camera walking, like the real she's world. She's like walking out of a store and going down the kind of like walking down a sidewalk where there are like sidewalk diners and stuff like that. Uh-huh. And so she's just kind of like walking in between people and yeah, and she's just like, so, you know, there's you know, drink a diet coke if you want. <laughs> Don't let anyone stop you. Hold on a second. I'm going to try. I didn't uh... know they did. I'm gonna try and look up this video right now on the YouTube. What 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 would you say the commercial would be called? Uh, it might be called "Because I Can." Let's see. That's the slogan. Life is short. Have a diet coke because I can. All right. Sounds sounds about right. I found it. I'm gonna hit play. Okay. Now you probably won't be able to hear it, but hopefully. Here's the thing about diet coke. It's delicious. This girl's got a giant can. The can is... <laughs> it, it's true. It's really big. I'm not talking about her, her butt, but the can that she's drinking from. It's like a 20-ounce can. I mean, just do you, whatever that is. And if you're in the mood for a Diet Coke, have a Diet Coke. Diet Coke. Because I can. I didn't realize there were so many different flavors of Diet Coke. 
That is a, an annoying commercial. Did it did it end already? Yep. Oh. It was only 30 seconds. So, do you get what I'm saying, though? Like, she's talking as though someone's trying to stop us from drinking Diet Coke. Yeah. 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 Yeah, those new flavors, though. Uh, here, maybe I can get some of that money back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the... The blood orange flavor is really good. <laughs> blood orange? Yeah. Yeah. It's a kind of orange. Um, and uh, that that flavor of Diet Coke, it turns out to be really good. All right. I'll, so anyway. I'll take your word for it. So as, as it often does, the experience went from that into uh, some, some previews. And uh, I don't know if you've seen previews for any of these movies. but So there's one for a movie called Assassination Nation. And it looks like something along the lines of unfriended in the terms of like someone was videotaped um, in a like sexual situation or something. And then the world went, no, this is like going in a whole different direction though, because it's like someone was recorded and then the world started getting on her back about, I guess, maybe some sort of slut shaming thing. Uh Uh-huh. And then she, if I'm understanding the preview right, I couldn't quite figure out what was going on, but it seemed like she and other people who are maybe tired of social media stuff like that are, they're, they're, they're losing it, man. They're like, they're, they're standing up and they've got things like machine guns and they're out killing people. What? Uh, Yeah. So I, I don't even know. I might go see that one. It looked, it looked bad. But is it like interesting. The Purge meets Facebook? <laughs> yes. Yes, oh. actually. Um, that's probably a perfect... Now, I've never seen The Purge, but I have that's either. what it looks like. There, was, there actually was a moment during the preview where I was like, is this another Purge movie? So, yeah. Um, and then there was a commercial for a preview for The, the Girl in the Spider's Web, which is one of those Girl in the, with the Dragon Tattoo movies. Uh-huh. Um, and now, uh, you know, I haven't read the books, and I only saw one of the movies, and I made the mistake of watching it with my mom, because I didn't know what the heck it was about. <laughs> so there's all sorts of rape and stuff going on, and I'm like, uh, okay, well, they're, I guess I'm watching this with my mom. They're real uh, good movies. Yeah. Uh, and, and from what I saw of the other ones... Um, like clips and, and reviews and stuff. I was like, eh, they don't look like they're very good. Did you watch? And so when the was this the Swedish version or the American? Yeah, version? I saw the Swedish version. See, I saw all three of the Swedish versions, and I really enjoyed them. I really enjoyed Did all they? three. Yeah, I thought they were great. Hmm. Well, I, when the American one came out, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to mess with that. But I then watching saw it the either. preview. Which is which is crazy because it's a David Fincher movie with Daniel Craig, and I was like, nah, I don't need to see it. Huh. Yeah, um I I didn't I didn't bother, but I I will say watching this um is is this one of those three? The girl in the spider's web is that one of the three? I don't remember. Cuz I wasn't sure. I'm like is are there more than 3? Did they already did they even do the other American ones? I thought they only did the first one. Yeah, I thought they only um, did one American one. And this didn't have Daniel Craig in it. Um or if it did somehow i didn't see him but this almost looked like a like a really dark comic book hero movie the way it was um the, the way it was in the preview and i i gotta say it looked pretty good so i, I might go see that one oh, um okay. and then yeah and then there was a preview for a movie called hellfest i sat through like 25 minutes of preview so y'all are gonna <laughs> hear it um uh, <laughs> movie called hellfest looks like a uh haunted house theme park in which someone's actually killing people so it's confusing because you the, the people who are being chased are like ha 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 very funny and then like wait what you're actually cutting my head off that's disappointing um so i don't think i'll see that one that didn't look very good hmm. it, it looked like something i would have gone to the theater to laugh at when i was like 16 and didn't have anything better to do okay so, and then I saw an ad for Mortal Engines, which uh, is a Peter Jackson thing that's coming out, like a young adult novel turned movie. I don't know if it actually is was a novel, but it has that feel. 
Um, and I got to say, it, I, I have no interest in it whatsoever. And I kind of wondered to myself, if Peter Jackson hadn't made the Hobbit movies, would I be more interested in this? Uh-huh. And maybe if he hadn't made that King Kong movie. Um, but at this point, I'm like, I don't care that Peter Jackson's name is on anything. It doesn't do anything for me. Huh. Um, and there's is a, it directed by Peter Jackson? I think so. Oh, okay. And the only thing it's really got going for it is that it's got Hugo Weaving in it. Um, and most of the preview, I've seen, I've seen previews for it before, and they looked really bad. This one actually looked a bit better, but still not enough to, to get my interest. Uh-huh. And there's one woman who's doing like voiceover throughout it. Um, it's not exactly voiceover. She's just talking to the character. But there are clips where you see her talking, clips where they're showing action instead. Yeah. But her delivery is just so boring. And and bored, duh. like she seems bored to be there, and like I'm, there's one point where it's I guess it's like the culmination of everything, and she's like, "Once you do this, there's no going back." And I thought, boy, that just put me to sleep. What does it even <laughs> What does it even look like? It's about. Um, it looks like it's about there's some sort of weapon. There, there's some giant machine, and I it's called London. It's sort of like a floating planet, or something like that Uh and uh there's some kind of weapon on it that i guess hugo weaving is going to use to destroy the rest of the world hugo and so agent smith right correct okay great um and so uh, you know it kind of has that feel of like hey maybe this is going back to the well a little bit because it's got the feel of here's this ultimate weapon kind of like a ring of power and they have to destroy it or stop it. And uh, it just it doesn't look good. Um, it looks expensive. <laughs> and that's about it. Looks like it'd be about as disappointing as that Fahrenheit 451 movie was. Oh. Uh, and then there was a preview for the new Nutcracker movie, which looks like those shitty Alice in Wonderland movies, which I actually haven't seen, so they looked shitty, but I don't know that they actually were. And then there was a movie called A Star is Born with Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. And I think the plot of that is she's ugly but wants to do music and has a good voice. That's the plot, I think. Wow. I think they probably fall in love. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say, actually, of all these previews, it, it did look like it was probably the most decent movie. Um, and I saw a preview for a movie called White Boy Rick, which is about this uh not popular looking teenage white boy who becomes a drug dealer kingpin it's got matthew mcconaughey in it as his dad huh. and it's it's sort of like uh hey uh and i kind of mean this from the tone it's not not exactly my slang here but like white trash going um more like urban feel uh, but it, it's based on a true story, so I don't know. It might be kind of interesting. Okay. And that's Preview Corner with I, Midwest Matt. I enjoyed uh, Preview Corner. That was fun. <laughs> well, expect more of it, because when I go to the theater, half the time I'm like, man, the previews were, were uh, A, a pretty interesting part of the experience, and B, like a half hour long. <laughs> so they, they get something. <laughs> Um, so searching, you know, well, wait, you know, what's ridiculous is that you're probably going to see that diet Coke commercial, like for the next two years. That's true. I have seen it a couple times already. And this time I was like, wait, I got to say something about this. Cause I don't know what the point is here. I've never seen a can that big before, like outside of a, like a baseball game. Like, yeah, no, it Miller looks like Light. a giant beer can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks like almost like her, her. Her, she's sort of straining to hold it. <laughs> yeah, like she's actually only four feet tall, and that's a regular sized can of <laughs> Coke. Uh, the, and by the twentieth take, she's like, "My arm right, yeah. can't hold the can anymore." All right. Now that all said, searching. Um, so this is uh, a movie. Like, like I said before, uh, this guy's daughter goes missing. He's looking for her, and it's it's not a found footage movie, and it's not meant to be, 
but in a way it, it's told similarly to that movie unfriended where you're seeing a lot through the screen. Although I think that movie you're seeing everything through the computer. Um, this is largely like that. You're getting to watch him try to look for her through her social media, calling her friends. Um, and it's done really well. Uh, there, there are a few flaws in the movie. Um, but when it comes to how it's presented, I think it's, it's presented so well um, through use of the computer. Uh, aside from like the scrolling arrow thing, that, that always looks like it's being it's moving really slowly. And it's an, it's always a smooth, perfectly linear motion. So that part seems a little weird. Uh-huh. And it, it actually, as nitpicky as that may seem, like that's the one little thing that kind of like takes you out of it a little bit, or took me out of it a little bit. So what do you what do you mean the uh, the scrolling thing? Like the little arrow, like when you go from one program to another, or you're trying to type in a different place. You know, you move the cursor. Oh, like the uh, the mouse cursor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so that. It moves strangely, which is weird because that seems like it would be the easy part to do. And they do all the other stuff really, really well. Um, And there's use of pretty much every form of media you can think of, like Snapchat. I think there are Microsoft and Apple computers involved. Um, And I don't think it feels like product placement because it just has to all be on the computer but at the same time i guess the fact that i noticed that there's apple and that i noticed that there's microsoft might i don't know maybe there is some intention i'm sure there's some intentional product placement in there but it doesn't feel like it it's it's uh you're actually just kind of with this guy doing the search and and it's it's effective in kind of making you feel like oh my god how would i search this and and then at least for my part because i'm not a computer guy i'm like oh well he's doing a way better job than i would <laughs> so, right. you go dude um because he he's almost like a ninja like it, 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 he's finding out what these things are along the way but when it comes to like switching from one thing to another and hunting down like okay i don't have the password for this but i can have the a new one set up if I send it over to this, but I have to get a new one for that. And so he's got to make like five passwords in a row kind of thing. Uh-huh. Um, and he's pretty good at it. Um, but, uh, but, but that's the, probably the, the real highlight of the movie is the, the actual investigation that he's doing on the computer. And it works really well. Um, movie pulls on the heartstrings a little bit at the beginning. It's got kind of like an up, beginning you know like the movie up yeah um but for me actually a bit more effective but i won't go into a rant about up again you don't care (laughs) Um, you don't like the beginning of up you know when i saw it i before i had seen the rest of the movie it it was pretty effective and then i saw the rest of the movie and then i was just mad because i'm like hey this this movie doesn't deserve that beginning so at this point i think i've had (laughs) enough time that now I hate even the beginning. <laughs> um, and, and you get to see some interesting stuff cause you get to see the daughter kind of grow up along with the internet. Like she's born in 2003, I think. Gross. And so some of the internet stuff's kind of new and you're watching clips of her growing up and you're watching interaction with the computer stuff and, and with the internet. And it's, it's kind of neat because you're seeing a little bit of uh, history of these social media being created, but also it's also walking you into the story of this girl's life and, and her father's life. Uh-huh. Um, for the most part, I want to say that uh, the main character, the main actor did a good job. Um, the other, the supporting actors in the movie aren't particularly good. Uh, there's a detective, um, a female detective who's uh, the character's a little inconsistent. Is it Deborah um, Messing? Is it? I'm looking at the IMDb for De- Detective Vic. Yep. Then it's Deborah Messing. And there are parts of her performance that are really not good. 
Um, and some of it may be a little bit of the writing. Some of it, as you kind of like get some more details, make a little sense in terms of like her backstory and stuff. But it feels pretty weird. Like at one point, she, she there are certain points where I'm like, she's investigating this, but she seems a little overly enthusiastic. And then at some points is just like going in a whole different direction. Like she's like frustrated and angry and it doesn't seem to quite work. Um, I don't know if it's her or if it's the, the writing. It's a little hard to tease out. Um, but it, you know, I want to say it doesn't take away from the movie, but I think it actually does a little bit. So like looking back on it now, I'm like, yeah, the, some of the flaws are pretty big smudges on the movie. But the stuff that's done well is done so well that it doesn't matter. I, I, I would say go check out this movie. Um, I don't know that you necessarily need to see it in theaters. Yeah. Um, but but I would say it's worth watching. And, I mean, if going to the movies only costs 7 or $8, I'd say it's worth that. Okay. Searching. Uh, yes. Okay, and, great. Oh, you know, and, and here's another thing that they actually do well, and it must be pretty good because I noticed it. Um I noticed that it was working really well, and that was the, how they were framing things. So just as a, from a cinematography standpoint, the way they use framing in the movie is is really, really effective, kind of drawing your attention to the right places and giving you a little bit. Like there's one point where he's on the computer, and you can see his face, but you can see what's on the computer like you can see his face because it's a uh, you know got it, the computer's cameras on him, but he's got another program open and it's sort of covering half the screen. Yeah, and it kind of moves, and you go like, "Well, all right, I'm interested in what you're showing me, but I want to see his face, more of his face, and the reaction to it." And then it kind of comes over, and it sort of sort of does a good job of like kind of teasing you and getting you engaged in that way of like, "Oh, I want to see what's going on over there." Um. And then I won't spoil the ending, but I will say that the ending gets kind of dumb. Oh, so, really? Yeah, it's 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 kind of disappointing. It turns out the girl was just at her friend's house. <laughs> no, it's the, it's not it's not <laughs> quite like that. Um, but but it is a little bit like oh, this is this is kind of silly. Uh, so searching, see it if you get a chance. I'd give it like a a pretty solid B. And that's it. Okay, great. Um, and then that brings us to my favorite movie of the week. <laughs> uh, I saw the movie from 1995, uh, Assassins, starring Sylvester Stallone and Antonio Banderas. Uh, so um i'm just gonna go through my notes as as we go here because i took so many that they deserve to be there's so many notes <laughs> well let me ask you something did yeah is this in a period of time where they were both in their heyday or was this like the was this like the last threads of them being popular uh i think this is right when banderas became popular because okay. Because he seems like he's really trying in this movie. He seems like he's like he's all about being in the movie. Whereas Stallone, Stallone could not look more bored. Uh, so let's see. This movie came out in 1995, which is the same year as Desperado. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. It was a couple years before The Mask of Zorro and a couple years before 13th Warrior. So... Let's see. Let's go to and Banderas is uh, uh come on. Let's see. He was he was just kind of hitting the scene there. Uh he was in Philadelphia in 93. Uh he was in Interview with a Vampire, Miami Rhapsody, Desperado, Four Rooms, Assassins. So this was like right when he started to pick up, like right when he yeah. started to take off. I, I'm surprised. I'm, uh, I, I guess, uh, glad for him that that didn't kill his career. Uh, he's great in the movie. He's he's terrific. Um, yeah. and here's something that I didn't realize about the movie till it was over was that it was directed by Richard Donner, 
who has done like a ton of great action movies. He he did he directed uh, Die Hard, uh, Superman, Lethal Weapon. Oh, wait, I think he did Die Hard. He he did all the Lethal Weapon movies. I'm pretty sure he did Die Hard one and three. Uh, he, he did some of Superman too. Right, yeah. You know, I never saw the Richard Donner cut of Superman two. I should I should watch that. Just yeah, to, heard uh, it's a lot better. Just to see Superman two was a masterpiece before before they did it. Um. So and it's written by the Wachowski brothers. Uh, really? who, who were men at the time. They're now, both of them are ladies. Uh, Do they go by the Wachowski sisters now? I don't know, but it's huh. Andy and Larry Wachowski who are now Lily and Lana Wachowski. So there's that. Um, but, and then I looked at the, the IMDB for, for the Wachowskis to see where they were at because this movie is terrible. And, uh, <laughs> and, so like their their big credits it goes uh assassins they wrote bound and then the matrix so like i don't understand how they how they were able to make that happen where they where they go from from this they wrote bound and then they get like full like carte blanche to to do the matrix with they wrote and directed that so well i think um i think some of the story goes like they were given a small quote in quotes uh, amount of money, like $15 million for the matrix and filmed just the scene that I think is kind of the intro scene where Trinity runs away and then like jumps up the walls and kicks people and whatnot. Uh-huh. Uh, and they used all the money on that and then went back to the studio and said, all right, look at what we did. And they were like, oh, okay, you're going to make a whole movie like this? Cool, here's more money. Oh, okay. Well, they it worked out for yeah. for one movie. For one movie, uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> uh, so the, <laughs> they, they really uh, st- stretched a lot out of that. There wasn't it's enough... been allowed to there, make a lot of other There wasn't stuff. enough underground cave rave in the first one. I needed more rave and more Keanu Reeves <laughs> ass. Uh, do you remember when we saw that in theaters together? You had seen it, you had seen it before me. The yes, I think it's the, it's the second one. Is it with the with the rave or is it at the third one? Uh, yeah, no, it's it's the second one. Um, where you, uh, well, I think the third one might have something like that too. Yeah, you, uh. you saw it before I, for before I did, and uh, as the scene approaches, you you lean over and you go, "There's some nudity coming up in this scene with Trinity and Keanu." And I was like, awesome, Carrie Ann Moss nudity, and it's Keanu Reeves' butt. <laughs> what, what Nick's leaving out of this story is that Nick and I were supposed to see this movie together, and I had nothing to do the night before he was coming up to my college area. And so I went and saw it on my own because I was just so eager. And then it sucked. <laughs> And it kind of served me right because I saw it without Nick, and then uh, and then you had to watch it again the next day. Nick's like, "Yeah, man, are you ready to go see this?" And I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, "Wait, what's wrong? Why aren't you excited to see this?" I was like, "Oh man, I already saw it," <laughs> <laughs> and serves me right. That'll but teach that you. sucks for you because then you saw it for the first time like a good friend and it was still sucky for you yeah <laughs> and then we got to see the third one together and things were all was right with the world except for the fact that all the matrix movies so yeah minus the first one minus the first one it's a shame they never made a sequel to that movie yeah um so assassins assassins starring sylvester stallone and antonio banderas uh, the movie starts in artsy black and white when it's supposed to be like this flashback of of someone getting assassinated. Uh, somebody walking out of this building and you see through the the scope of the rifle that he's using. And, uh, and then there's like a sound of a gunshot and you're just supposed to assume that, all right, I guess the guy in the hat is dead. And then the next scene is we're going through a leisurely stroll in the swamp. And uh, it's Sylvester Stallone who's wearing these big galoshes, uh, with his pants hiked up to his to his like nipples, uh, 
uh, and he's leading this guy who's clearly about to be assassinated. Um, and it's the, the scene has uh, shades of uh, John Turturro and Miller's Crossing where he's like, have a heart, don't kill me. And Stallone's like, oh, no, you're going to die. But but S- Stallone is a kind assassin. It's not personal with him. He's he's just he's just there to do his job, which is just to kill people. And uh, the guy's like, please don't shoot me. And Stallone's like, OK, well, he, he's a gun. It's got one bullet in it. And the guy goes, okay. And he just shoots himself in the head. <laughs> <laughs> and Stallone, and Stallone like goes, ah, another tough day at the office. <laughs> and he it, just, does he really say that? No, that's just the look oh. on his face. Okay. And, uh, Lord. and so then he like leaves this guy in the swamp with the gun. Like it's a perfectly good gun that he's just leaving behind <laughs> that has his fingerprints all over it. Uh, so then, uh, so then they go back to Stallone's like hotel room or whatever, and he's got this ancient old, uh, Apple MacBook and, uh, the MacBook is the only computer anyone uses in this movie. There is, there is so much action that happens on computer screens and they're all on the same model brand of, uh, Apple MacBook or, or whatever it is. And and everyone uses it and everyone uses the same program to like do internet chats. Um, and this movie features the, the glasses wearing Sylvester Stallone, which means he's, he's smart and he's good at what he does. Uh, and then, uh, he gets his next target, which is, uh, which is a guy who looks like the police chief from lethal weapon, but it's not him. Uh, and, uh, so there, the, his next target, um, it's like two, he's going to get paid $200,000 to eliminate this billionaire guy at a funeral. And we go to this funeral and there's like all kinds of press there because the guy who he's being sent to assassinate is a billionaire. And, and the press is literally next to the, the, um, what's the car that carries the dead person? Hearse? Hearse, yeah. The press is right next to the hearse. Like, they're pulling the body out of the hearse, and the pallbearers are carrying the coffin, and the press is, like, walking next to them going, 10 years ago, this man was shot, and, and his brother now, and then it just goes, like, there's so many people from the press there, and this, and this, this guy who whose brother is dead, and he's about to be assassinated. Um. Uh, and then next, there's there's an opera singer singing Ave Maria at the funeral uh, in the cemetery, which you don't see very often. But the the rich do live differently than the rest of us. Um, and so this this super rich guy is there, and he has all of these bodyguards with him because he had been shot once before, and um. He's got all these bodyguards, but no one notices that Stallone is there, and he has on this ridiculous cast on his arm, which can only hold a gun. And <laughs> and and there seems like there's more media there than actual mourners, and no one questions that Stallone is there with this giant cast on his arm. And and then all of a sudden, uh, Banderas comes around the corner and shoots the rich guy in the chest, stealing the kill from Stallone. And all of a sudden Stallone is going after Banderas. Like he's a superhero. Like someone needs to stop this maniac. And Banderas is <laughs> someone needs to stop this guy. He's killing people. Right. Exactly. I was going to kill that person. Exactly. And, and so Stallone and Banderas have this shootout in, in the cemetery with all these people running around and then now, uh, let, wait, hang, hang on just a second. Let me make sure I got this image. Sure, right. sure. He's got a big cast on his arm. Are either of them actually in any sort of disguise? No. Okay. Well, no, that no. Sounds I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Banderas is dressed like a, a groundskeeper. Ah. I yeah. See. Is his face covered? No, of course not. Right. Um. And uh, so Banderas starts shooting at Stallone and Stallone starts shooting at Banderas and they both miss, of course. And then the cops show up and arrest Antonio Banderas and Stallone. Stallone is like, oh, we got to f- I got to I got to find out who this guy is. <laughs> and and uh, 
he gets into his car to drive away, and Banderas is in the back of a of a squad car, and he stops next. The squad car stops right Stop. next. This the squad car stops right next to uh, uh, Stallone's car, and they just kind of look at each other, and uh, and then the the cop car drives away. So while the car is driving, Wait, how does Stallone get out of there? He just walks to his car. So, so he's been having a shootout with him, and the cops take Antonio Banderas, but they're like, hey, that white guy's fine. Let him go. You mean the injured guy with the cast on his arm? He couldn't be bothering anyone. I see. The, it's the cast disguise. Right. It just continues yeah. to work. So then uh, gotcha. the police car has taken Banderas to jail, and um, the cops are looking at this sniper rifle that Banderas had, and the, the one cop is pointing it at the other cop's face, and he's like, this thing's pretty cool. <laughs> In the back seat, Banderas dislocates his thumb to get out of his handcuffs, and then he just is able to kick out the rear window of the police car. And he like he he reaches he reaches out the window into the front window, breaks the neck of the cop driving the car, and then the car like wrecks right. And uh-huh. uh, Banderas gets out through the window of the car, which starts a trend of the only time Banderas gets out of cars is through the window. He does it three or four times in the movie. He he gets out of the a broken window of a car. Well, you see, that's actually an Antonio Banderas thing, because Antonio Banderas has this sort of obsessive compulsive tick that he can't actually open a car door. So they just had to incorporate <laughs> that in the movie. Um, so then it cuts back to Stallone, who has like a, a police scanner in his car, and he's like, I really got to find out who this guy is. And, and he's like tracking down uh, Banderas. Uh, and Stallone is able to respond faster than the cops to where to where Banderas uh, escaped from the cops. Um, and then and then the next thing Stallone does is he uh, he smashes his car or he bumps his car into a taxi cab and he gets out of the car, goes up to the cab driver and he says, oh, man, are you uh, are you OK? you want some money i don't have any insurance and then he just punches the gu- the guy who drives the cab so he can just steal the the cab and uh and he he's like listening to the 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 calls coming in for people who need taxis and he hears one that says man needs a ride to the airport and stallone's like that's it that's that's Banderas. <laughs> <laughs> he's like that's, that's gotta be him pretty mad deduction that's, skills that's gotta be him only one person could need to go to the airport and it is it is banderas <laughs> um that was an interesting twist if it wasn't though right i mean yeah. it would make the movie three and a half hours long but. yeah um so then that's when we find out that stallone so so it is banderas it is him uh that he picks up and uh we find out that stallone's name is robert I'm sorry, I've got like this movie playing out in my head right now where uh-huh. he gets to the airport and he's like, oh man, I, re- I really thought that would have been him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, he still has to be a cab driver because he's an he's honorable man. <laughs> I'm sorry, he's a, you find out his name is... Oh, like, yeah. his name is Robert Rath, which is terrible. Yeah. Uh, and then we find it's, out... It's good screenwriting right there. Yeah. Uh, and then we find out that Antonio Banderas's character is named Bane, which which I just love because Bane, I'm yeah. Bane. Um, and so then they they go and like park the car, and then they have like their confrontation with each other. And uh, so Banderas has his sniper rifle, and they're both pointing it at each other through a bulletproof glass in this cab. And, they do each got sniper rifles. Uh, Stallone has like a handgun, and Banderas has a sniper rifle. Gotcha. And um, Banderas uh, smashes the window of the the cab and shoots a soccer ball out of the sky. And he says that he's going to shoot some innocent people if Stallone doesn't start driving the car. And Stallone is like, "Oh man, I can't have innocent people on my conscience." Uh, I guess Why we'll drive. Why does he just shoot him? Uh, because there's bulletproof glass between him and Banderas, which is like, why doesn't Banderas just run away? Um, <laughs> so then again, they have like this this confrontation where where Stallone is driving the car and Banderas is trying to escape the car through the window because that's what he does, and and uh, 
Stallone is like smashing Banderas against a bus. Like while they're driving, he just keeps swerving the car into a bus. And, uh, and uh, while while this is happening, Banderas is like half out the window holding on to the bus that's that he's being smashed against. Stallone is having a conversation with him like, so are you going to tell me who hired you? <laughs> 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 um, and then that's where I have the this note that Stallone just seems to be really bored to be in this movie. He uh, he just has like this bored, dead look on his face more so than usual. Uh, and then let's see. Maybe, maybe that's the, uh, maybe that's the character. I, He's a little I get jaded. Well, the character, the character is jaded. He wants to get out of the, the killing for hire business, but, uh, you know, you can't, you can't get out. Uh, and so then he's, uh, he's on this laptop and he remembers something that Bandera said to him about a chess game that he played with his old mentor 15 years ago. And and on the computer he starts playing this old chess game that they that he had from 15 years ago. He's like, oh, I remember every move of this game because it's smart Stallone. Uh, and uh, so anyway, the the game like continues. Uh, and then in the next scene, there's we get introduced to our female lead, and it's Julianne Moore, which was oh. quite a surprise. I did not expect to see Julianne Moore, and it was her. You know, whenever I see Julianne Moore, I think, all right, awesome. I like Julianne Moore. Yeah, me And then too. I think, oh, wait, this is going to be a flip of the coin, whether this is a decent movie or utter crap. Right. And this was crap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so uh, so Julianne Moore is is the next target. And Stallone has been offered $2 million to, to kill her and these Dutch people that she's trying to sell these military, I'm guessing, military secrets to. And so um, Stallone is uh, trying to hunt her down. She's running this this scam with these Dutch guys where she's got them running all over the place in order to get to to get to her. And Stallone is so reckless that in, in an airport, he pulls a gun on a guy who has similar hair to Antonio Banderas. And he just like <laughs> he just pulls a gun on him and holds the gun to his face. And he realizes that it's not Banderas. And he's like, get a haircut. <laughs> and then walks away and i'm like i know this is a pre 9 11 world but i'm pretty sure you can just brandish a gun in an airport with zero consequences well i mean you can have a shootout with someone at a funeral that's got television all over the place and yeah that's get away true. with that maybe he's just kind of used to being able to do whatever he wants yeah uh the guy who he says to get a haircut to does not show up again even though i wanted to him to show up with cut hair uh, so then Stallone is able somehow to figure out, uh, who the Dutch people are and, uh, they don't let him on the elevator with him. And he's like, shit, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> and he's like, oh, maintenance. And he goes down to like a maintenance closet where there's a computer that he can hunt down. Uh, he's trying to hunt down where Julianne Moore is and he, and he, and the only way he's able to figure it out is there's one room that has called room service four times for coffee. And he's like, that's gotta be her. And then there's some more thrilling. Well, Cause she likes coffee. I guess. Cause she's, she has, rented, <laughs> she has rented two rooms and one of the rooms has been sent coffee and a can of tuna fish because Julianne Moore has a cat. <laughs> oh okay. so that's gotta okay. it's be the her. tuna fish that sets him yeah yep more of that brilliant deduction like right when he's like hey a guy going to the airport uh that must be him so julianne moore uh is trying to get this deal to go down with with the dutch people and then antonio bandera shows up he he shows up he kills everyone in the room uh because julianne moore is in a, in a separate room and at the same time stallone finds julianne moore and uh he uh he like pulls her away and it's at this point that i write down stallone just looks really tired he just has the sleepiest eyes well, meanwhile antonio banderas looks like he's just having a blast um yeah i don't think i've ever seen antonio banderas phone it in uh you know i, I gotta got agree with you um so stallone and julianne moore go off together um Stallone's like I'll, I'm going to try and keep you alive for some reason. Uh, there's no reason for him to want to keep her alive at all. Well, I mean it's Julianne Moore. Yeah, 
And it's like young, cute Julianne Moore too. She's got like pigtails at one point in the movie. You're like, this is, I like this Julianne Moore. <laughs> um, uh, so then uh, she's able to escape from Stallone, but she leaves her cat behind. And for some reason, uh, Stallone, no. Stallone takes the cat to a random pet store. And the lady who owns the pet store knows the cat. And she goes, where's your mommy? Or something like that. Like whatever you say to people who have cats. And uh, <laughs> and that's how Stallone <laughs> that's how Stallone is able to find out where Julianne Moore lives, and uh, and then he and then they start working together against Antonio Banderas because Stallone decides like this is his last mission and he wants to be done with it. Um, and then I have so many more notes, but it doesn't really matter. Um, let's see. Uh, Wait, so his his last mission is to prevent No, his last mission was to kill Julianne Moore and all those Dutch people. But um Oh, well here, let, let's talk about the end of the movie. So super spoilers for the end of Assassins. Um so remember at the beginning of the movie with the black and white footage where we see a guy get shot who's yeah. wearing a hat? Turns out that Stallone was the one who shot that guy. And it turned, and it's Stallone's old mentor. It was his best friend that he had to kill as part of a contract to become the number one assassin. Turns out he's still alive, still uh-huh. alive, and he's the one who's been giving Stallone all his contracts for like the past however long. And he's also the one who's been hiring Banderas to kill Stallone. So Makes there's sense. there's a huge confrontation, and. Uh, and then uh, Stallone kills everyone, <laughs> and they and they live happily ever after. <laughs> gotcha. Um, there's a couple other things. Uh, there's one scene where where they're in uh, Julianne Moore's apartment, and there's like a standoff between Stallone and Banderas. And Banderas finds Julianne Moore's perfume, and he sprays it, and he's like, "Ooh, Jasmine," and. Uh, and so then whenever That's he's perfect Antonio Banderas, by the way, thank you. It's like You're he welcome. was here. Um, so then whenever, uh, whenever he yeah. smells, he smells Jasmine like four or five times throughout the movie. And he always just assumes Julianne Moore must be nearby. And, and he like, it's so ridiculous that he, he just smells a random flower and he's like, it is her. Meanwhile, they haven't been to her apartment and she didn't bring the perfume with her. So why would she smell like Jasmine? Uh, well, you know, Jasmine just happens to be one of those scents where once you put it on, it just stays, stays forever. Her, yeah. And, and leaves a little trail wherever you go. Yeah. There's a, there's another scene which has uh shades of the French connection where Julianne Moore is chasing down this, uh, elevated train in Seattle. And, uh, and I'm um, like, this is like the poor man's French Connection. Uh, I saw that. Oh, the French Connection is an excellent movie. That is it's on my list. It's an amazing. It's an amazing movie. Um, there's a sequence in it where where Gene Hackman is is in a car chasing down a train, like an, an elevated train, and it's so intense and so crazy. And this movie is the opposite. <laughs> Yeah, I recall it being the opposite intense. Uh, I recall being as bored as Sylvester Stallone sounds. Yeah. Um, what What prompted you to watch this? I uh, just wanted to see it. I'd never seen it before. Huh. Are you going to follow it up with uh, Ballistics? Uh, ballistic X versus Sever? <laughs> I don't think so. But uh, I think the next, because there's a couple of Stallone movies that I still haven't seen, and one of them is The Specialist. So I might watch that, as I've never seen The Specialist, because it's him and Sharon Stone. So I might see that sometime soon. But uh, I don't remember it. But Assassins Assassins was kind of fun to watch, but it was way too long. It's like over two hours long. Yeah. Uh, but totally fun. I had a I had a blast watching it. Um. I'll post some of my notes on our on our Instagram if if anyone is interested in seeing that. Uh the This Week in Film Instagram. So wait, so are you recommending Assassins? Uh a little bit if you want to watch something stupid. 
if you because if you if you go in expecting what it is, it's it was a lot of fun to watch, but the movie was really really stupid. It sounds like something to have on, sort of. If there's something tedious you have to work on, yes, that's a that's a great great thing to put to to say. It, uh, you can look up every now and again for the action or Julian. Yeah, it's uh it's ridiculous. The and there's like one switch that goes off in the middle of the, in the middle of the movie, like or the, like the middle of when Stallone and Julianne Moore are together, where it's like, all right, they're together now. Uh, they're having like a cute moment together. Uh, they're best friends now. Oh, they're gonna split this twenty million dollars. Uh, their lives will be forever changed. Like, like it just goes from I was hired to kill you to I guess we're together now. It's so dumb. Hmm. But that was Assassins. Uh, check it out if it's on TV. Or uh, on uh, You just said something about splitting $20 million, and it got me thinking uh, for a moment about a movie called A Simple Plan. Oh, if I've you never haven't seen, seen that. You should That's see that. It's a Coen Brothers movie, right? You know, if it, if it is, I'm not too surprised because it's, it's sort of got that feel. If it's not, I wouldn't be surprised either, but... Um, it's definitely worth a watch. I think uh, that you should check that out soon. Okay. I will. I might even check that out again. And listeners, now that you know something we might watch soon, you can go check it out too. <laughs> yeah. I also might try to get to the theater to see that movie. Uh, oh, what's it called? Operation Finale. It's uh, It's got Ben Kingsley and oh, Oscar the, Isaac. The Nazis movie? Yeah. I heard yeah, not no. great things about it. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, well, that's enough for me. I might not. I'm not going to bother with that. <laughs> I was hoping to get uh, to the movies to see the new Mission Impossible, but it, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, I heard that's I like it's still playing though. Yeah, but uh, it's tough to find the time. True. I have all these people that live in my house. I've heard about them. Um, in fact, I hear them. <laughs> can you? Yeah. Oh. I yeah, I, I listeners, I hear all sorts of stuff you can't hear. I'm like an omniscient narrator. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, um, my family is yeah. in the kitchen upstairs eating lunch right now. So, so yeah, if you crank the volume up really high, you can hear them talking. I don't think you can. I don't think it actually like it, it picks up through whatever I hear, but not the not the listeners. I guess this is a conversation we could have offline. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but before before we go uh, before we go. Uh, I'd like to, to take us over to a quick visit to Area X. Oh, and, gosh. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Annihilation Corner. Out there that, yeah, Annihilation Corner. There's a, um, uh, apparently the box office for it is unnaturally or like, uh, inaccurately low for, you know, like the audience for it because it was released in theaters in America. Uh huh. Yeah. But in a bunch of other countries, it just went straight to to like streaming services. Yeah, and that's it was they did that out of spite. Um, so like, uh, what? yeah, so like the director of the movie had final cut on it, or let's say, let me see, there was a one producer. There's two different producers, and uh, the one producer sided with the director on the final cut of the movie uh, because the the one producer wanted to like dumb it down. And, and add all these things to it so that it would make more sense or something. Um, or to spell it out for people. To spell it out a little more. And the, the one producer disagreed and he was like, we're going to leave it the way it is. And so then the other producer was in charge of like distribution. And he's like, fine, well, if that's the way it's going to be, then we're not putting it in theaters overseas. So he just kind of sold it to Netflix or, or whatever. Huh. Yeah, so the movie's got like a troubled production uh story yeah and and then you know uh probably i don't know what it actually did make but it sounds like if you were to check it out it would give you kind of a misleading sense of yeah like if, it's, you, if, you, if you think of box office is like how good a movie is it'd be pretty misleading yeah and it, and it was done out of spite huh that seems like a dumb move but all right yeah well that was area x corner <laughs> Our, the hottest new segment on this week at film that we forgot to Stay do the tuned. last two weeks. <laughs> Stay tuned next week for Constantine Corner. <laughs>
And at some point, I'm going to start reading this book, so it'll we'll really get some lot of a lot of useless information. Um. All right. Well, that's all I have for this week. Um. Anything? Anything to plug, Matt? Uh. No, I don't think I do. Okay. Um. All right. So. Um. Please. Go ahead and uh, if you haven't already, uh, write us a review on iTunes or wherever you uh, listen to the show. It helps us out. Share the show with your friends and neighbors and family. And uh, if you want to get in touch with us, you can find us on the Twitter, the Facebook, and the Instagram. Um, if you've been hankering to see a movie versus movie, Dawn of Jill, uh, <laughs> whatever it's called at this point. Uh, throw that out there we'd love to to put we'd love to pin some things against each other that uh the listeners want to hear yeah that'd be a lot of fun uh get get involved with us and we'll get involved with you oh yeah i want to point out um i watched attack the block because uh last week when i asked uh our social media people like what movies we should watch uh an old friend of mine fran said to check out attack the block and i was like oh yeah that's right i have always wanted to see that so thanks fran call fran um so then, uh, if that's the end of the reel, we'll see you next week in film. See ya.